Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm doing bandsaw hacks, but before I get started on that, for those of you who have asked me, and some of you have asked me a few times, if I have t-shirts, I finally have t-shirts, and if you want to check them out, the link is in the description box below. But let's get started with bandsaw hacks. Okay, as I'm getting started here, I want to talk first of all about the tires, which is the rubber coating over top of the wheels. And I recommend, if you're not using your bandsaw every day, to loosen the tension on your bandsaw blades, because when you leave tension on, it very often creates a flat spot on the top of the tires, so that when you go to turn your bandsaw on, it creates this big vibration and you hear this whop 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 and some people think they've broken their bandsaw but it's just because the uh, blade is going over top of the flat spot. If you keep running it, it will eventually go out um, but in the meantime it can be pretty scary for some people. Something else that can create noise and vibration is when you get dust sawdust between the blade and the tire uh, and sometimes if the blade is hot it actually fuses that sawdust right onto the tire and just the compression of that uh, sawdust against the blade can do that and I recommend from time to time of course we're always unplugged here when we're working inside the band so I just use the edge of one of my uh, chisels and just kind of go around the entire blade and make sure that there isn't little bits of sawdust caked on there and you should do that on a regular basis anyway and that just gives you a smoother running bandsaw. Bandsaw blades can dull quite readily and the reason is because they're steel. There's no carbide in most bandsaw blades and what happens is the blades when they heat up they get so hot sometimes the very tips of the the teeth, uh, they tend to melt a little bit and they lose their temper and they go dull. And the way you tell if your bandsaw blade is dull is when you grab the, the blade with your finger, it should tend to want to hook you. It should tend to want to grab your finger, just like a fish hook would do. If it doesn't do that, your bandsaw blade is probably dull. If you've ever been cutting wood on your bandsaw and you find that as you're pushing the wood through you have to move the wood to a little bit of an angle in order to follow a line, that's called bandsaw blade drift. And in an ideal world we would never have blade drift but um, we do get it from time to time and there's lots of reasons for it. Sometimes the blade is dull, sometimes the blade is dull on one side, that can happen. Sometimes it's the setup the way it is, could be the tires top or bottom might be a little bit defective. Lots of reasons for that, but I'm going to show you how you can compensate for that. Okay, I've tensioned the blade down, I've turned the power on, and you're looking at this over my shoulder. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start pushing this wood in, and I expect that I'm going to have to turn the wood one way or another as I get somewhere up here. And then I'm going to stop it. Now that that blade has stopped, now there's not too much drift. I'm going to move the camera around to this side here. And you can see in here that there's a little bit of drift. You can see that it's the uh, angle here is a little bit uh, higher up. What you can do now, if you want to set up a fence, this is what you can now use. So there I've set it up. I'm just using a piece of wood. You don't need anything fancy. And I'm just clamping it and I'm actually clamping it at a little bit of an angle. And now when I push wood through, it can run along that fence and it will be at the right angle because that, that fence is compensating for drift. And you can see, if I had taken my time a little bit more, I might have been able to get it absolutely perfect but it's off a tiny bit but that doesn't matter because that's how you can readjust a fence for bandsaw drift. 
A lot of bandsaws either don't come with fences or fences are optional for them. And you know the other thing you can do, you can use a speed square. And again, you can set it up if there's some drift. If you're finding there's some drift, you can set it up with drift. Or if you're just doing some small little cuttings, you can just put that on right square the way it is, clamp it down with some um, quick release clamps like that. And now you've got an instant square or an instant fence on your bandsaw and you can just go ahead and cut the wood. And you know what? Sometimes if you want it a little bit higher, check this out. You can put a, a piece of scrap wood, anything in there, just to give it a little bit of lift. And now you can move the flatter part around there if you want. And again, go ahead and clamp that like that and like that. And now you've got, oops, there you go. Now you've got an even thicker fence. So if you've got thicker wood, higher wood here, you can use a thicker one. So lots of different options using a speed square. Very often, one of the things we like to do with bandsaws is to cut little thin strips for veneering uh, and that sort of thing. And a bandsaw is perfect for that. And if you have a commercial fence on your bandsaw, they generally will just move back and forth parallel. And once in a while when you're cutting, trying to cut veneers, what will happen because of drift in your blade, when you're using the fence, the blade will actually drift right off of the wood. It won't give you a, it won't cut the whole way, or it will start binding because it wants to, the blade wants to drive deeper into the wood. It can be very annoying. So what we do, rather than using this kind of a parallel fence, we use something called a pivoting fence. And this is what a pivoting fence looks like. Basically, it's just a piece of wood. Sometimes some people round them. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, sharp or round. Round is probably a little bit easier on the wood that you're cutting. And basically, you just set a distance. And I'm just going to temporarily clamp that one on there now just to show you how this works. And the idea with these is once you get these on, um, because the, the, that little fence is not fixed in one location, you can actually, when you get started putting wood through, you can actually move it. As you go through, if you've drawn a line on your wood, you can actually follow that line and keep it up against this little sharp edge here, or this rounded edge if you round yours over, and you can keep that distance, and by uh, pivoting on that fence, you can actually get some very nice veneers. But there's another thing you can do that I like to do, which is even easier than this. Let me go over to the table saw and show you. Here on the table saw, I have installed a seven and a quarter inch circular saw blade. In this case, it's a 24 tooth. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this blade, and I really prefer these Freud Diablo blades. Um, and the reason is because they are so thin. They're the, I'm sure they're the thinnest circular saw blades on the market. Um, and they just do an excellent job. But watch what I'm going to do to give myself a line to follow. Now I've set up my table saw blade and you're going to notice I'm going to cut a very thin slice. I'm going to tip the wood on end and I'm going to do another end cut and then I'll do one more on this side and that's going to give me a leading edge that I can then take to my bandsaw. So let's go ahead. There, I can take that to my bandsaw now, and that will give the blade a track to run in. Watch how easy this is. Okay, let's go ahead and cut that veneer. I've used the pivoting fence in the past, um, but I prefer the table saw method now because um, not only does it work just as well, um, but you know what? It's a little bit less wear and tear on the bandsaw blades as well.
Well, that concludes my video on tips and tricks for the bandsaw. I'm Colin Kenneth for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.